dear students welcome to unit 2 distributions before going into the unit first of all i thank you all for your big support and i give a big applause for supporting me in unit 1 by giving lot of views and lot of shares and positive comments uh, which make me to do the unit 2 uh, in more professional way the comments given by the students like uh, the video length is little big so in unit 2 what we are going to do uh, i just made a little changes like we are not going to write uh, professionally we type use latex software to view the questions you can view the questions solutions formula etc etc and now in the unit 2 we are going to see about distributions if you want to know what is mean by distribution why you need a distribution and what is the importance you just click the description you see the link go and see the video what is the importance of distributions and come back to this session okay so distributions are classified into two types as we see the first one is discrete distributions the other one is continuous distribution so in our syllabus we have two distributions for discrete the first one is binomial the second one is a poisson similarly for continuous distribution we have two distributions the one is normal distribution and the second one is exponential so we are going to see one by one and dear students please subscribe our channel and give your big support to me thank you of course it's not my channel it's our channel let's go so first of all we have to do the notations for the following distribution we have some common notations what you are going to do okay let's go here always we think small n represents the number of trials and next one is capital n so capital n is the number of times n trials are repeated for example you have a bakery which contains four different kinds of cakes now uh, there are 200 families lives around the bakery so now all the 200 families are going to buy cake in the shop so they can buy make buy maximum four kind of cakes in a different combinations so now here n is equal to 4 that is number of cakes and capital n is how many families are going to buy this cake in a different combinations so hope you understand the difference between small n and capital n now we are going to take x as a random variable it is going to represent the success because always we have to bother about the success okay it may follow binomial or it may follow poisson it depends on the problem okay now the next notation is small p so small p is going to represents the probability of success in a single trial for example what is the probability of success when you toss a dice and to get a number 5 so probability of success is 1 by 6 obviously whenever you speak about the probability of success always there comes probability of the failure so we now know the classical result probability of success plus probability of failure is always 1 so we use q is equal to 1 minus p in the problems so these are all the basic notations we are going to use in binomial distribution okay so as i said p plus q is equal to 1 and q is equal to 1 minus p so now before going to binomial distribution uh, we have to know what is mean by bernoulli trial and bernoulli's experiment it is named under a great mathematician jacob bernoulli you can google it and you can see the history there what is the marvelous and remarkable results jacob bernoulli did for 
mathematical community in the case of probability on also the other fields okay now let us go what is mean by a bernoulli trial so a bernoulli trial is a random experiment okay in which you should have only two outcomes that means your outcome might be a success or your outcome might be a failure in a random experiment when the trial has only two possible outcomes then it is called as a bernoulli trial that one is success the other one is a failure now so what will happen my sample space will become simply what success and failure so now my sample space is only success and failure do you remember if success occurs failure cannot occur if there is a failure i cannot get success so what i say these two are what mutually exclusive also in my sample space i have only success and failure nothing else so it covers what the whole sample space then i say this event is going to be what the event is going to be mutually exclusive as well as exhaustive so in bernoulli trial whenever you take any trial it is going to be mutually exclusive as well as exhaustive these are all some basics we have to know okay let's go what is meant by bernoulli experiment the experiment contains n independent repeated bernoulli trials so you are repeating bernoulli trials n times and all trials are what independent then it is called as bernoulli's experiment okay now let us go into the core definition of binomial distribution guys now suppose i take a random variable x and we are going to deal with success it is obvious and it has n bernoulli trials when it says it follows binomial distribution we have the parameters n and p are the parameters q cannot be parameter because we know that p plus q is 1 so if you know p automatically what you can do you can find q is equal to 1 minus p so binomial distribution is going to be represented by b of n comma p and the mcq says it is what it has two parametric it has two parametric and it is said as biparametric distribution and this is the formula for binomial distribution n c x p power x q power n minus x okay where e x will take the values from what 1 to n because it is a discrete distribution it can take the maximum value up to n and with p plus q it is obvious so now you understand how you get the formula for binomial distribution okay let us go now uh, in we are going to deal the problem with exam point of view okay so in the exam point of view nothing will be given there is a story will be given to you seeing the story you have to say what is this problem follows whether i should apply binomial or i should apply poisson or normal exponential etc etc okay let's go now we have to understand what are all the assumptions made in binomial distributions if these assumptions are true then i can apply binomial let's go so it has two possible outcomes only success and failure so that means uh, binomial cannot be applied for cricket why because when you go for cricket suppose two teams are playing a and b so what are all the outcomes a will win b will win sometimes what will happen there might be a draw there might be a draw so i have what three different outcomes so for cricket i cannot apply binomial distribution but when you see partially in cricket 
for tossing the coin i can apply binomial okay tossing the coin i can apply binomial why because when you toss a coin you will be having either head or tail so we will be having success failure okay hope you understand so a game like cricket or football or the games which have the third outcome we cannot apply what binomial distribution but the good thing is when you toss a coin when you toss a coin or when you roll a dice what will happen always will have success and failure if i want the number 2 when it roll a dice it is going to be success if you don't get two all the remaining things are failure so in the case of coins in the case of dice in the case of cards etc etc i can apply binomial okay this is the first condition let's go the second condition the number of trial n should be always finite because ah uh, we are using n c x so p power x k power n minus x so n cannot be infinite it's obvious n can be finite we'll say all the trials are independent all the trials are independent you see however you play this card game how many times in your life or however you toss the coin how many times in your life it doesn't matter suppose you're tossing a coin at first time you're getting hit can you say at the second time when you toss a coin the first time will influence the second time never never possible so each trials are independent that one trial will not going to have influence or affect the the next trial or some other trial so all the trials are what independent and finally what we say probability of success is constant in any trial you see how many times you throw the coin it doesn't matter the probability of it is was always 1 by 2 so in the case of gambling with coins or in the case of playing cards or dice all those things the probability will never change for the success but when you take a player when you take a player when he go to a game at a day one he might be having a skill maybe one person he is practicing the skill for next 10 years okay whatever it game it might be cricket or football or kabaddi whatever it is after 10 years what will happen i cannot say the success rate or the skill rate of the person is going to be the same one person then it is useless to go for the coaching so it might be now 50% or it might be now 80% so here the success rate is getting increased okay so i cannot apply binomial so now what we say finally to apply binomial we should have this four assumptions guys what it is it should have success failure the number of trials are finite the trials are independent the probability of success in any trial is going to be always constant so if i speak about success a failure is default okay if success is constant don't ask the no question the failure is also constant okay let's go let's go some properties of binomial distribution so the mean of the binomial distribution is n into p so the mean is going to be np and the variance is going to be npq so mean is np variance is npq and always remember standard deviation should be a positive square root standard deviation never be negative okay it's going to be positive square root npq okay guys now there comes a question we have a mean we have a variance which is bigger as mean is bigger or variance is bigger so many people what they think you see mean has two values n into p uh, and variance is three values n into q so always they say what variance is greater than mean but it is absolutely wrong why the reason is because my p and q are probabilities 
my p lies between 0 to 1 as well as my q lies between where 0 to 1 okay for example what i'm going to do i'll take my n is 20 and success and failure let us consider the same p and q are 1 by 2 now when you calculate the mean it's going to be 20 into 1 by 2 it is 10 when you calculate the variance 20 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 it is going to be 5 so this is the next mcq mean is always greater than variance in the case of binomial distribution guys hope you understand some people ask a question sir why not the equality comes when it will be equal so we say np is greater than npq uh, yeah, some students will ask sir when it is going to be equal it cannot be equal it can be equal when p equal to 0 when p equal to 0 what will happen both the sides will become 0 but i don't consider the case why p is 0 means my success rate is 0 guys if my success rate is 0 why should i play game suppose i want to go and gamble i want to bet on something i know that 100 percent i will lose then no idiot will go and what bet on that so this case is obvious when p equal to 0 equality comes but it is useless so that's why we don't bother about that so we always say mean is greater than variance okay guys done so now let us directly jump into the problem and we understand how to solve the problem and before going to the problem uh, you can go and watch the calculator shortcut tricks videos okay because in the problem how to calculate uh, the values for binomial or poison whatever it is you need a, you need a calculator to solve your answers okay so go and just watch the video and come back here okay let's go so let us take a question out of 800 families with four children each how many families would have expected the four choices are given first of all now what is the guarantee that this question follows binomial distribution before that my question is uh, you have to identify the data in the problem very important thing is if you identify the n in a wrong manner total problem is collapsed okay let us go now 800 families with assumption they are having four children each so i will say my n is four because each family will have four children and 800 families are repeating this so this what is this 800 it is going to be my capital n is it clear so each family will have four children and there are 800 families are repeating this case okay so n is repeated 800 times so small n capital n are identified so now we see what p probability of success okay probability of success so either you take boy as a success or you take what girl as a success so it is always going to be 1 by 2 50 50 okay done okay now we'll go formally so we know p q n etc etc but what you have to know whether this satisfied the binomial condition let's check since it's the problem number one so it has only success failure if you think boy is success girl is failure if you think girl is success boy is failure done and you see the trials are finite we have what four four children so n is equal to four it's going to be finite and all the trials are independent it's obvious right getting a male children in the first family it is not going to affect the getting male children in the 10th family or a female children in the 25th family so all families are what independent so all the trials are independent done 
And what is the fourth condition, guys? Probability of success. Just now I said, getting a boy or getting a girl, maybe the success rate is going to be 50-50. So all the four conditions were satisfied. Okay, just you have to keep in your mind. If you like, you can write in the exams. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, now this problem is fit for what? Binomial distribution. Okay, let's go. So, as we said, P, the probability of success getting boy. Okay, I'm going to take X as a discrete random variable denotes the number of boys because I'm a boy. I'm supporting a boy. That's it. So if you like, you can write for girl also. Okay. And four children. So P is 1 by 2. Q is 1 by 2. N is 4 and capital N is 800. That's it, guys. So now let's go and crack the problem one by one. Okay. So for the calculator, I prefer Casio or whatever the calculator which is allowed in the by the university you can do but this 991 ms is good to do some shortcuts okay let's go so let us consider we have to assume from the assumption we say the problem follows what binomial distribution okay good so if this is following binomial distribution immediately what i go I'll write n c x p power x q power n minus x. So the good thing in the problem is p and q are same. When p and q are same, the problem is going to be very simple. Uh, you don't even need a calculator. You can easily just like that crack the problem. If p and q are different, then we have to go and help get the help from the calculator guys. So now for children's c x. So 1 by 2 power x. 1 by 2 power 4 minus x. So obviously when I change this, I'll be getting, since the base is same, I'll add the power. It's going to be simply 4cx by 16. Wow, done. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the problems using this final condition one by one. Let's go. Yeah, that's what it displayed here, whatever I write. And then uh, for this, the x value should vary from 0, 1 to maximum up to 4. Okay, guys. So what is the first question asked? The number of, okay, it should be like number of families, the number of families would have exactly two boys and two girls okay so let us find the probability first so it is obvious so x represent boys if you have two boys in the family out of four remaining two are girls it's very obvious so probability of x equal to two so my formula is what okay let us write the formula here somewhere so you can remember every time okay good so it's going to be 4c2 by 16 guys and you see i said already to use calculator for this problem you don't need calculator because 4c1 is 4 4c2 is 6 and 4c3 is again 4c1 4 and 4c4 is 1 okay so we don't need all these things okay let's go so it's going to be what simply it's going to be 4c2 so I'll be having 16 by 6. So probability of getting two boys in a family is this. But the question is not actually this. They're asking how many families would have two boys. So for 800 families, what you have to do? For 800 families, you have to multiply with this n. Okay, my capital N is what? 800. So, 800 into 6 by 16, guys. So, 15 to 6, 300. So, out of 800 families, I would have 300 families will get what? Exactly 
to boys and to girls is it clear done now let us go at least one boy you see uh, it should be very careful with those words i already speak in unit 1 at least means minimum minimum including that one whatever you say at most at most means maximum including that point okay so this is the meaning let's go so since our case boys are success at least one boy okay so p of x greater than or equal to 1 so at least one boy means what i can say so i'll be having one boy i'll be having two boy three boys and four boys okay or if you feel that it's going big i can write x greater than or equal to 1 as simply what 1 minus x less than 1 so x less than 1 means probability of x getting no boys excellent so probability of getting no boys again the formula is what 4c naught by 16 so 4c naught is what simply 1 so 1 minus 1 by 16 so you'll be getting the final answer what you'll be getting the answer 15 by 16 so now what i can say for 800 families what we have to do 800 into 15 by 16 so you can just have so 800 by 16 15 to 15 will be getting ah oh, great 750 families would have what at least one boy out of 800 great done okay next at most two girls okay see in this problem probability of getting girl and probability of getting boy that is p and q are what same so it's not a big deal but when p and q are changing we should be very careful to choose uh, the question so i don't want to do the problem in terms of girls because i say my success is boy so probability of at most two girls what i can do at most two so max what is it zero girl one girl two girl and what is equivalent in boys i will say if it is two girls then i will have two boys if it is one girl i will have three boys if it is zero girl i will have what four boys so what is the equivalent term here so i will say it is going to be at least two boys okay now the problem over guys so when they say two boys i am going to have at least two boys so x equal to two x equal to three x equal to four guys so now what i am going to do uh, just 1 by 16 do you remember we have the general formula 4c x by 16 4c x by 16 so do you remember yes 1 by 16 is common so now what i am going to do 4c2 4c3 4c4 so it's going to be simply 4c3 is going to be 4c1 it's 4 so 1 by 16 i'm going to yeah add this values you can see here also you see we have written 4c not to 4c 4 okay so 4c2 is going to be 6 4c3 is going to be 4c1 against 4 and 1 so we'll be having what yeah we'll be having the probability of getting 11 by 16 so now as we shall so what the 800 families will have so the 800 families will have 800 into 
11 by 16 so that is 550 families 550 families will have what at most two girls or at least two boys that's it guys now a children with both the sexes so that means what is the meaning the family should have one girl minimum as well as the other side one boy minimum so i don't want all the four or what all my four kids should not be boy this is not eliminated similarly all my four kids cannot be what children cannot be girls so it is very simple children with both the sexes means i have to eliminate zero boys because I should have at least one boy, then two boy, three boy, four boys eliminated because if all four are boys, he cannot have children with both the sexes. So now as usual for CX by 16 guys. So he'll be having one by 16. So for C1, for C2, for C3. So we know for C1 and for C3 are same. It's going to be simply four. So 4 plus 6 plus 4. So we would have what? 14 by 16. So as usual, for 800 families, for 800 families, we have to multiply this by 800, 14 by 16. So we'll be having what? 800 by 16 that is going to be 50 into 14 are ah, great so 700 families would have what at least one girl or at least one boy that is children's with the both the sexes done guys so we have completed this problem one successfully let's go into the problem two uh, okay, let us see. In a certain type of city, 20% people are literate. So they given percentage. Okay, so my P is going to be 20%, 0 0.2. Okay, so 200 investigators are taken a sample. Ah, this is very important. So very nice. Small n is 10, and 200 investigators are going to investigate 10 people. So it's good. So this is going to be small n and capital N guys. Okay, good. Now, how many investigator would expect to get what? Three or less people are literate in the sample. So each person is going to take 10 persons as a sample. So 200 investigators are going to do it. Okay, so now it is very obvious. You see, illiterate, literate rate. So it has success failure. And education, like one person is literate and the other person is illiterate, they are independent. There is no connection. Okay, and literate rate is what? Fixed. It is not going to change. And n is 5 men. We are going to take 10. So all the four conditions. Are satisfied it obeys binomial distribution it's ready to apply binomial distribution so you see i'll assume that capital x denotes the number of literates and p is 0.2 obviously so n is going to be 10 p is going to be literate success rate that is population i have 20 percent literate so q is 0.8 and capital n is 200 that's it guys so now let's go into the problem directly. What they're asking here, three people or less than three people are literate. So that means my probability is going to be n c x p power x q power n minus x. You see, in this case, we should be very careful because my p and q are different. So I'm taking 10 samples where 0.2 x 0.8 10 minus x so here x lies between 0 to 10 okay good now 
you can see whatever I write, it comes. Now they are asking what is the probability of 3 or less than 3 literates. So it's simple what you are going to crack, a 0 literate, 1 literate, 2 literate and finally 3 literate. Now the trouble is um, calculating all these things manually it is very tough. So as usual I said go and see the calculate trick video, uh, the description you can see the link ok. You click it and just learn how to use your calculator to calculate these things in a simple way ok. And then come back here so that we are going to solve the problem easily. So now uh, to get mark sake so you have to write like this ok 10 C naught 0 0.2 per 0 0 0.2 per 10 similarly 10 C 1 0.241 etc. So you have to write like this. So using the calculator immediately you can calculate what the values it will give the values I will tell you you can see in that video how to do this. So find the value of this, 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 this ok and just add all the values. So now we will get probability of x less than or equal to 3 is what 0 0.8789 and very important thing this is for what this is for one sample of 10 people interviewed by a person but we have 200 people are investigating like this. So when 200 people are investigating, what is my answer? When 200 people are investigating, so it is going to be 200 into 0.8789. So it is going to be 175.6 and now this cannot be what? Decimal. So I am rounding it to 176. So out of 200, 176 reporter would have a chance that they will report what? The literacy rate is 3 or less. Hope you understand the problem guys. Thank you. Okay. So these are all the two core problems we discussed about binomial uh, distributions. Uh, in the forthcoming videos, we will see some more problems and properties on binomial distribution. So thank you for your support. Again, by watching the videos, subscribe and support our channel. Thank you.